Hi, my name is Olaf Blameris. I'm a filmmaker and visual effects artist with over 10 years experience in the visual effects industry. And this video is for any filmmaker, director, producer with visual effects in their project but can't quite afford a visual effects supervisor to help guide them along the way. So we're gonna go over some key concepts and a few inexpensive things you can do on set to best prepare you for the visual effects you need. So let's get started. This is just a quick disclaimer that this is a theory video, not a how-to video. Those videos will come, but this is all theory. So if something goes over your head or it doesn't quite make sense or you feel like there's missing pieces, those will come or feel free to Google them or even ask questions below. I'll do my best to answer everything. But right now, this is about theory. We'll get to the how-to later. All right, back to it. A chrome ball acts as a real-world reference for your VFX artists to work from. They can reverse engineer the lighting, use it for rendering and compositing comparisons, and make sure exposure values are correct. It's a great way to make sure that whatever visual effects element they're generating for you snaps into place in your live action plate. Using the chrome ball is as simple as placing it in the scene wherever you intend for your VFX to be. And if you're unsure of where the VFX are going to be, just feel free to walk around in the frame gathering different reference as you go. You're simply recording frames and you're going to hand them over to your visual effects artist and now they have a real world reference to refer to whenever they need to. I can't stress enough how important it is to have some sort of reference shot. An objective image that shows us exactly what something should look like in frame helps immensely. Now, when you first Google VFX Chrome Ball, you're going to find some very expensive options. But if you instead search gazing globes, which are for gardens, you'll find a variety of options far cheaper and often with varying sizes, which can come in very handy on set when you're at different distances away from the camera. Next up, HDRI, High Dynamic Range Image. This 360 degree image allows your VFX artist to accurately light in their 3D software any object that you're hoping to place in your live action plate. This used to be very complicated and time consuming, but with cameras like the Ricoh Theta or the Insta360, it allows you to easily capture bracketed 360 images that'll be stitched together later in post to create a 32-bit float image and accurately light in your 3D program. Now, again, don't be too concerned with the how, this is all theory. And much like your chrome ball, you're gonna place this in your scene wherever you want your VFX element to be, without anyone in it, and before you strike your lighting. This, combined with the chrome ball reference, and your VFX artist will thank you. Camera information. Having the correct information will allow your VFX artist to recreate the camera in their 3D software and match the compression with which you shot your live action plate. The main things you're gonna need are your lens focal length and your sensor information, as well as for digital, your recording resolution, because that can often change the crop factor on the sensor. So having that set of information is vital. Nice to haves would be your camera height and distance to subject, but those aren't necessarily needed and often are tuned to eye anyways. Clean plates simply provide your VFX artist with more material with which to paint or clean things up in post. Rather than pulling from within the frame and forced to smudge things or smear things, they now have what was actually behind something or the full range of what was possibly in the scene. Pretty self-explanatory, but just in case, a clean plate is just running again with no actors in it. And if you don't have a motion control rig and your camera moves in the scene, just simply get your camera operator to repeat the movement slowly. That's all. You're not trying to make a clean plate, you're gathering elements for your visual effects artist to paint out and create the clean plate in post. Matching focus is a good idea, but it can also be nice to just get them sharp because it's always easy to defocus in post, not the other way around. Measurements. While not something I typically do always on set, they are nice to haves and relatively easy to get. Just a small tape measure that allows you to quickly grab a measurement of something simple in the scene, whether it's a tile, a chair, a table, something planar, a pole, doesn't really matter. Something simple enough so that when the VFX artist is setting up their scene, it's correctly set up to scale, and scale matters in visual effects. Also, while any unit of measurement is fine, typically VFX is always a metric. So now camera tracking is an art into itself and I'm not going to try and distill how to properly or easily camera track anything here in the next 30 seconds. But what I will do is link a video to a friend of mine, Matt Murkovich, who breaks down what a survey track is and how that can be instrumental in helping track very problematic shots later in post. And to be honest, just shots in general. They're a really good idea to have, 
The short explanation of what a survey track is, you're recording your entire scene to create point data that you can then relay to a more complicated track without necessarily only relying what's in that shot. You'll have tons of extra information with which that track can now build itself off. Again, I'll put a link in the description below. Please watch that and just generally follow Matt for all your tracking needs. Distortion charts are nice to have, but typically speaking, no one has the time or resources to capture them properly for every lens on your production. Most rental houses will have some sort of distortion chart that you can shoot, but typically speaking, even when you ask for them, you don't always get them. While specifically shooting a distortion chart for each of your lenses can be tough and time consuming, simply finding anything with grid lines or horizontal and vertical lines within the frame will allow you to at least create some sort of distortion chart to help you best match the curvature of the lens in your visual effects pipeline. That said, you don't really need distortion charts. Most of that can be done to eye to make sure it matches, but when they're incredibly characteristic lenses, you're best off getting a distortion chart. With heavy pin cushion or barrel distortion, you're going to need it. But you're also gonna need a lot of reference for how that lens reacts to make things match. Maybe a bit of a controversial take, but I don't think color charts are as important as some may say. Now, you're probably grabbing them for your color process anyways, especially if you're shooting multiple cameras, but in my experience, color charts aren't as essential to good VFX as some might think. So while they're nice to have, they can complicate the process quite quickly, and unless you have an incredibly strong team, I'd probably avoid them just to save yourself some further headaches down the road. So I hope this video has helped you with a better understanding of what you can do on set to help with your visual effects process. If you have any questions, please ask them below. Thanks so much for watching and until next time.